my god, the roster has dropped for the U.S. men's national team in their two games for the upcoming matches against Japan and Saudi Arabia. We are going to break it all down, YouTube fam. We have to get into it. So hit like and subscribe, and let's get after it. Yes! What is up, everybody? And welcome to Mike Windishman's favorite ever podcast in soccer we trust. I'm Jimmy Trash Can Conrad alongside Hollywood Heath Pierce and Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies and the U.S. Men's National Team roster has dropped for these next two upcoming friendlies against Japan and Saudi Arabia before the World Cup roster gets named officially on November 9th. And boys, holy crap, some notable names are not on this list. Zach Steffen, he's injured. Timo Weah, he's also injured. Jordan Pifok. Not injured, not in the team. Charlie is a resident number nine. Are you surprised that Jordy Pifok is not in the squad? I am a little surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Give, given that he hasn't shown really anything for the U.S. men's national team, he's he's playing for the top team in the Bundesliga. Yeah, and he can't, and and he's he's producing in the Bundesliga, and he can't get on this roster. So, you know. You, you, I think Greg Berhalter always says the door is open and you, you may not perform with, with an opportunity in camp. You go back, you, the expectation is you get better, you improve, and then you, you, you earn your next shot. Mm -hmm. I think he's done that. So when you're looking at variety and different options, I'm a little surprised that he's not included just to see what he looks like now. Maybe he's, he's, you know, he's able to play at a faster pace now, um, playing in the Bundesliga, you know, different different runs. You have to, he's finding ways to be successful still in the Bundesliga, which is a top league in Europe. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. He, yeah, that, that one, that one doesn't really make too much sense for me. Yeah, as I wrote behind me on my board, it says, you're P-fucking kidding me that he's not involved okay i'm gonna to continue to ride that joke until it's absolutely dead and then i'm gonna resurrect it we're gonna keep it going and going and going now we're gonna break down every line for everybody listening we're gonna break down every line of the field and 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 we'll get into that right now if you're watching on youtube you can see that the roster's up but before we get into the specifics of all the names heath any big surprises for you both in with regard to inclusion or exclusion um, not, I mean, obviously I think Jordan Morris is a big surprise for me, uh, just in terms of, of, of form plus a role within the national team. Obviously when I think more logically about where he plays on the field and Christian Pulisic, not getting the time that we want him to have on that left side, you start to think about it. Obviously Tim, Timothy Weah, I think changes that equation as well as to where Jordan Morris comes into that. Um, and so as I look to 26 players and you start to look at the depth charts, you know, Joe Scally makes sense. He's playing every game. You got to keep him in the mix, whether or not he makes the final roster based on 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 injuries and the fact that uh, we have no uh, Anthony Robinson. That's one that uh, you have to keep bringing him in because he's keep he's continuing to earn the call ups with his club form, and I think that's totally fair. Um, and he should have a legitimate shot of making this roster. Joe Scal, um, I mean uh, Sam Vines, obviously for the injury. So I would say that's the 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 only other one is is the Jordan Morris uh, call up to me, and then Malik Tillman. I'm super curious. We lack depth, I think, in that midfield, and he stepped in there uh, as somebody that, um, you know, when you think about when you think about uh, Christian Roldan or the role that Sebastian Legette played, he seems to be the new, uh, better option for Greg Berhalter. So that's another one that I'm I'm excited to see with very little caps likely make a World Cup roster. Yeah, it's very interesting to see Malik Tillman's rise, and then obviously, can he get and stick with this team? He's got two friendlies, 180 minutes in total left before Greg has to name his squad Jimmy. on November 9th. Here's some fun facts, and then we'll get into One the question teams. before that, Jimmy. Go ahead. Are you surprised with, with any of the center backs excluded? I know I know. we talked about Sands and, and Ream and the McKenzie. McKenzie, these guys are all playing minutes, getting opportunities, and and in some cases doing well. Are you surprised? Oh, Jimmy, that, Jimmy that loved Eric Palmer him? Brown last time. He I did. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, I'm a big EPB fan, but I will say I'm not surprised that he's not in. Uh, the four center backs that we've been predicting the whole time are the ones that are in. So I'm not surprised. Maybe, you know, I, I think that the writing's on the wall for, for the rest of the guys because you have Cameron Carter Vickers that's in, Aaron Long's in, you have uh, Walker Zimmerman and Chris Richards. And so... 
Just four, it, just four center backs. Just four center backs. Yeah, mm-hmm. you would like to maybe have had that fifth one in there to maybe put some pressure on these other guys or maybe to give a last look to somebody. But this feels like, in my humble opinion, that these are the four center backs we're going to see. Otherwise, he would have maybe looked at somebody else. And, and, and one thing, I, the only thing I'd say that I'm worried about right now, and that's, again, going down to um, uh, Jordan Morris, is I believe everybody else within Major League Soccer, if I'm looking at this correctly, uh, maybe Sean Johnson. No, they're 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 good. Uh, 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 will be in the playoffs, which helps kind of bridge the gap between the end of the regular season and the World Cup. Jordan Morris, if Seattle don't, that's a pretty large amount of time to be out. Now, you could excuse that in like, oh, rest and recovery, but we all know that like the best time is to be in peak form in a season, playing matches, and that's one that I worry about um, uh, as, as well. No, no, that's a good shout, and obviously something for us to dissect moving forward. Okay, fun facts, and then we'll get into this a little bit more. The roster, this roster right here, is going to hold an average age of 24 years and 201 days as the first day of training. Actually starts on September 19th. 13 players on this 26-man roster are age 23 or younger. Six players return to this roster after not taking part in the June window. That's Serginho Dest, Ricardo Pepe, Gio Reyna, Chris Richards, Josh Sargent, and Sammy Bynes. Sargent returns for the first time to the U.S. Men's National Team fold since the opening World Cup qualifying matches back in September. It's been a full year since we've seen Josh Sargent wear the red, white, and blue. The 22-year-old striker has scored five goals in eight matches for Norwich so far this season, tying him for second in the championship in the Golden Boot. Now, uh, a member of the 2021 Gold Cup winning side, defender Sam Vines, received his first call-up since last November, almost a year, and he has been in all eight matches for the Belgian league leaders, Royal Antwerp, registering one goal, in their perfect 8-0 and 0 record. Ricardo Pepe and Gio Reyna returned to the team for the first time since the March qualifiers. While Dest and Richards were last with the squad during the January February qualifying window. That's a lot. That's a lot of guys kind of coming back into the fold and and being welcomed with a warm embrace as it were by Greg Berhalter and his staff. But let's talk about the goalkeepers first, okay? We have a couple players that maybe you've heard of before, but no Zach Steffen, he has been hurt with Burrow. It feels like the drop off of Zach Steffen has been, that's a steep, maybe steep. We want to use that word or not, but he's not in. We got Ethan Horvath, Sean Johnson, and Matt Turner. It looks like for me, Matt Turner is starting to distance himself as the number one. Heath, I'll come to you as our, as our, well, I feel like I'm the resident defender, but uh, Charlie's more of our attack. I played, I played a half a game and <laughs> I played half a game in goal until I was about 12 years old. So I feel like, unless Charlie's got, that's very Mike McGee called. of you. That's very yeah. Mike McGee of you. I, I so, do, you know, I, I probably was the longest goalkeeper in our, our, um, in our threesome here. It doesn't look like Zach Steffen's going to be playing much with Burrow. Now it's already been announced that the coach came out and said that the other guy's going to be the number one for a while, which is not a good sign. Uh, it looks like Matt Turner's our clear number one. Do you agree? Uh, yes. I think he's the clear number one. My my question still comes down to or, Ethan Horvath's playing, and he's shown that when he can step in, he can play for the national team, right? Sean Johnson, I think, has showed the same with the national team, but is having a, a different season with NYCFC, at least in most recent form. Um, and so I wonder, I, Zach Steffen, I still think, is is out in front as as a healthy player if he's, if he's getting games. Now, if he doesn't play a single game, that was the same situation he was in last year, but at least it was, it was couched in like, yeah, but you're at man city. You're going to play right. a couple games, whatever that worries me in terms of the mentality of him coming into the team. Now, do I still think he's a number two in this national team? Yes. Uh, it's hard to not think that I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I mean, I know his fall Charlie? fall from grace feels a little bit different, not grace, but fall from his status of our clear and out number one. Uh, and then you go into his, his, his club team performances, national team performances, and you start to go, man, you know, where is he at mentally right now? Because we know he has the goods when, when he's doing it, but I just worry, like, has the perception of him and his ability to to be clutch for the national team change? Charlie, it felt like in the, the FA Cup semifinals where he made that mistake, it is going to hurt him as it pertains to this World Cup cycle. It just feels like that's that one moment where he needed to come up clutch and he didn't. And now, not necessarily that's being held against him, but now he's being judged against that particular mistake and now when he goes to burrow and makes maybe another smaller mistake he's like well see there he is he he, you know he sucks at this he sucks at that even though we all know that he's he's got the goods when he's locked in and ready to go he's a tremendous goalkeeper yeah we we know what zach stefan can be when he's healthy and in form and confident 
But right now, Matt Turner is the one. That there, there is no question that Matt Turner is the best goalkeeper right now for us heading into the World Cup. Now, Horvath and Johnson, they're both playing. They're, they're playing well. Probably if Horvath continues to do well, you know, he, he, he'll he probably be the two um, and, and Johnson the three unless Zach Steffen gets healthy because I think Zach Steffen's been bat- battling uh, injuries for, for a while now. This isn't something new. Um, I, I'd say back to his loan in, in the Bundesliga. He's, he's had injuries. So mm-hmm. getting healthy is is huge for him. And, and he, the last time I saw him play, it just looked like he was laboring still. He, he, he still – isn't back up to 100 percent and now it seems like he's he's had some injury issues with Middlesbrough so Matt Turner is our is our best is our best keeper right now and that's not even that should not be a question but it's also still not ideal by the way sorry I jumped back in here no I think that's (laughs) fine I think you're right I mean he he is he gonna get all the Europa League games that that's that's great if so but if he isn't and he only got maybe one or two he's gonna get some cup games is that enough for him to be super sharp I don't think I mean, I think he'll be ready to go when it's time, but I don't know if it's the ideal situation. Obviously, we want somebody starting week in and week out, which is where Horvath and Sean Johnson have a little bit of that. uh, I wouldn't say an edge over that. I think Matt Turner's our clear number one, but uh, obviously up for discussion on that. Uh, Anybody wants to hit us up on Twitter, ISWT pod, drop us a follow there as well. We'd really appreciate it. Let's move to the defenders. Let's go outside backs first. Reggie Cannon's in. Serginio Dest is in. We have DeAndre Yedlin in and Joe Scally. We have four right backs, baby, but we know yeah. Joe Scally can play on the left. And Sammy Vines, as I mentioned before, coming back into the team almost a year after he last represented us. That's a lot of guys uh, in, in those spots. I know Anthony Robinson just so everybody's like, where is he? Where's Jedi? Well, Jedi's hurt. He got hurt uh, playing for Fulham. So he's going to be our number one. It's no question. But that now has opened up that side of the field. And Sammy Vines making a, a late play here. Resident left back, Heath Pierce. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I like this, and we had we had a comment earlier earlier on that was was how many how many minutes will Sammy Vines play? I could see him getting 180 minutes. If you're Greg Berhalter and you realize that Jedi Robinson is not bulletproof, you don't know what the status of him is come World Cup. You don't know the status of any of your players. You better have a plan, right? You better have a plan of somebody that you can trust come World Cup time. And Sammy Vines again. It's been a year since he's been in. He's playing for the top team. He's playing next to Toby Alderweireld. He's playing with Vincent Janssen. He's playing with top, like, really good players, right, mm-hmm. uh, on a day-in, day-out basis. And he's performing at uh, on the weekend. So you've got to give him a, a solid run. We've talked about it. We've got a lot of guys in the history of our national team that get a lot of run. They get a lot of burn before we judge whether or not they're good enough uh, in the national team. Other guys, not so much. Other guys get a chance against Mexico. They miss, and they're out, right? And we know that that's what happens. But for Sammy Vines to be able for we know Greg's a trust guy. You got to give him his minutes. And I would say 180 minutes for him is the best route to be able to be like, this guy's ready for the international game. Two random opponents that are going to throw something completely different at you between the two games. Yes, they're friendlies. But that's his, this is his opportunity to make a World Cup roster. Yeah, and he's a natural left-sided player. Joe Scally can play on the left, but he's a natural right But he's not. <laughs> yeah, he's so not we already left-back. saw Scally at the left-back spot against Uruguay. Chuck, you know, so so we know, and that yeah. was against a very good opponent. He, I mean, that was you know his first meaningful game, and and you're obviously going to be nervous. You got to put all that into take that into consideration. Do you give him 90 minutes? Maybe Sammy gets nine 90 at left back, and and Scally gets 90. Or do you are you with Heath mm-hmm. at uh, the left back uh, spot? You give him, and then conversely, answer me this: Who do you give these 180 minutes to on the right side? Because we've got four dudes. You know, you got yeah, a lot of guys that can play. You got Dest. Again, you have Des, Cannon, Yedlin, and Scally that all can play right back. Yeah, I think you're you're definitely going to give Des a run. That he's he's a starter just because right. it's Serginho right. Des. He's going from Barcelona to Milan. He's going to play just like Christian. They're they're going to start, even if they're not getting as much burn as you want. I think Sammy Vines definitely gets an opportunity because he's your natural left back. The- I wish we were good at a three-five-two, Charlie. I wish we were because this roster looks a lot more ha- happy to me in a three-five-two. We're just not good at it. But right. Can we, sh- uh, can we shift into that? We, yeah, we, we, we could, but go ahead. Well, we can we, talk about. We don't that. have two strikers, though. You know, it's we like did. we're already fighting for one. How, how can you say we have two? We have, hey, know? we had we had two, but one didn't get called up for a two-two forward system. Who only plays in a two-forward system at a club <laughs> called yeah, Union yeah, Berlin? Yeah, yeah. Well, if yes. if you if you don't if you don't rate them, then yeah, you can't call yeah. them in. You can't change to that formation. So, Vines for sure because he's the only left, natural left left back. 
I wouldn't mind seeing Chris Richards there either. You, you might see him uh, get a run out uh, on the left side just mm. because those are two guys that have played played there. But ultimately, I, I don't I don't rate Joe Scally on the left side. And even on the right side, it, it's up and down. I know he's playing in the Bundesliga, but it's not it's not perfect by any means. I think he still needs a, a long way to go to be a lockdown right back on the international level. So I'm, I don't have a ton of confidence right now looking looking at at this uh you know when you're talking about playing against england you're looking at this this back line i i, I wish we had the stats for the last time that Sergio des actually played 90 minutes for either club or country I, I i can't remember the last time that he actually got rolled out and played for 90 minutes at a right back spot maybe higher up the field but even then when he was playing for barcelona it felt like he got subbed off or he got subbed on or whatever it may be. So so getting 90 minutes out of desk, especially when he hasn't played much and obviously making the move from Barcelona to AC Milan is going to be something of note tonight. And I wonder how Greg's going to manage that moving forward. Reggie Cannon been locking it down for Boa Vista. Also, if you didn't hear a previous podcast, he has been playing. They've been playing a back three Boa Vista at times, and he's been playing on the right side of that back three. That's something to, to Heath's point. Can we adjust and make these little tactical movements on the fly that could potentially release. We talked about that with Eric Palmer Brown's capabilities to do the sure, same. Sure, too, though, sure, but. sure. Anyway, I, I think it's going to be interesting to see who Greg gives the 180 minutes to on both sides. So obviously something to keep an eye on. I think Sammy Vines will get at least 90. We'll see if he gets the full 180 and then we'll, we'll take it from there on the right side. Okay. Let's get the center backs. We have the four that we've been talking about a lot. Chris Richards, Cameron Carter Vickers. We have Aaron Long and Walker Zimmerman. I think Zimmerman is slated to be one of the two and then who's going to be next to him because we saw it in the june window where there was a rotation of it was zimmerman and long then it was zimmerman and cameron carter vickers then it was aaron long and cameron carter vickers and 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 in in qualifying it was richards and miles robinson so exactly right so so i wonder again who the 180 minutes are going to go to charlie i'll throw it right back to you and then heath i'll get your your thoughts on this who would you go with charlie that first game against japan on september 25th who are you going with as your starting center backs, I think Greg is going to go with Zimmerman and Long. If if I had to, if I had to guess, because he's going to go with partnership, and and those two have played the most together. Mm-hmm. So you you want your center backs to be at the very least on the same page. In my opinion, I would go Zimmerman and Chris Richards, but obviously, I just don't think. He's going to go with, with Richards just because of maybe the lack of playing time right now. Even though he's he's got some minutes and he's at Crystal Palace, he'll, he'll probably tend to go with a, a partnership that they're very aware of each other and, and you know, at times have complimented each other well. But I, can, can you can you say that both of them are in form in, in MLS? That That's my question. If they, if they were both crushing it in MLS, winning all their duels, winning all the tackles, almost mistake free and everyone makes mistakes but you you feel that man they are absolutely start best 11 in mls they are crushing it then you say okay well they're playing week in and week out they're crushing it they've set the example the bar is high great no i agree i don't i don't feel that when i'm watching them play i see mistakes left and right And, and these are the things that concern me as a former center back where only one mistake over 90 minutes in a World Cup game could cost us not only not getting through or winning a game, but also not getting through our group and having lived through that uh, and seeing that firsthand. It sucks when when it's just it's the finest of margins at the highest levels. Now, Heath, there's a lot of chatter in the comments about Tim Ream, obviously a captain for a Premier League side and Fulham been really solid. We've discussed this a, a little bit in terms of just the way that Fulham sets up, and it's a little bit more of a deeper line that I think we'd uh, want to see from our national team and how Greg Berhalter likes to play, and I think that might be ruling out Tim Ream. But I thought that he maybe had a chance to be in this window, so maybe I'm slightly I mean, surprised that he didn't get a chance to, to or at least get looked at here. But it, it's clear that that Greg's moved on from him and from John Brooks. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go with Tim Ream, you go with John Brooks, just the same in the last month, right. right? Maybe not now in this window, but John Brooks was playing every single game for Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. That is a massive club. And he was the highest paid, I think, one of the highest paid defenders in the Bundesliga and highly regarded as a defender in the Bundesliga. You don't bring him in because he doesn't fit your system or your form, which is unfortunate because when we go back to the beginning of Greg's time and you go back to what Greg did at the club level, John Brooks fits perfectly into um, 
the way that well, Greg Brooks, wants to be Brooks able to play. Ho- had horrible moments with with oh yeah Klins- Klinsman as well. So oh yeah, I not, agree. It's I, not I, just but, that. But what but, I, but uh, I agree. He he does have weaknesses at the international level, like Jimmy said. One mistake costs you in an international game. A bad turnover or bad positioning. We've seen when he gets pulled out of positions, people get in behind him. There's big gaps being left there. That's why I I, I continue to go back to this. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, Walker Zimmerman and and Long, I would prefer that to be a Walker Zimmerman and and Cameron Carter Vickers just for something different, just because I don't I, I I feel safe with Long and Zimmerman, but I don't feel great. Like, I feel like at least I know there's going to be a few bad moments, but they're not going to we're not going to have shockers out of them. Right. Because we've seen them enough. Um, whereas, but at the international game, you don't need to have a shocker. You have a six of a game where you're not involved for 89 minutes. You make one mistake, you get beat. And that's where I'm like, okay. Maybe it is Vickers. Um, maybe it is uh, my issue with Richards. I wish it was Richards. I would love for Richards to start every game in the World Cup, but he's not going to get the minutes. That makes me feel comfortable that we're going to squeeze that lemon enough to get uh, some sort of finished product to trust in a World Cup match. Um, although we've seen flashes over and over again, and we can see the quality that he has when he's on the field for Palace or when he was at Hoffenheim. I worry about that. We went from being like excited about center back to now me being Excited about our our forwards in terms of form because we got a couple of players that that I that, that that are in that form right now versus our center backs where I go, if you're Greg, you're probably going, well, I, this is kind of what I got, and I don't know where else to go from here. I'm gonna jump in and say and, and reiterate that I really loved our team shape and where we held our line against Mexico at as as at Azteca in Mexico City. I'm looking at that lineup now. I hadn't actually gone back and looked at it till you were. Uh, giving us some good insight there from both of you. But it was Anthony Robinson on the left, Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman, and DeAndre Yedlin. And what I loved about that game is I didn't think we we played too high, you know, unnecessarily, and we didn't drop too deep unnecessarily. And I thought that really kept us in good positions to always be hungry to make plays and, and to and to kind of work in groups. You know, you guys know, first first and foremost, where you're you're playing – and you got five guys that are thinking one thing. We're going to go. We're going to attack. We're going to press. And the other five are like, eh, you know what? We're going to tap the brakes. I'm a little tired. Let's just drop off. And I thought in that particular game, we were really solid in, in our movement. And, and I can't I can't emphasize enough how, how impressed I was by that because I hadn't seen that consistently throughout all World Cup qualifying. And we go down into probably the hardest environment and, and do it to perfection. We need to see that again in the World Cup. I don't care who our center backs are, but they have to be the ones that can manage that. Now, obviously, with Walker and Miles, that's not going to happen with Miles tearing his Achilles. Walker has that ability, but Yedlin on the right was was interesting there, and and then Anthony on the left. Zach Steffen was in goal. That's another one. Tyler Adams is right in front of them. So, Weston McKinney didn't play in that one. It was uh, Costa and Musa, and then Timo Weah, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic that started the game. Obviously, there were some changes there when Pifak came in and made that uh, missed that chance. But that's what I'd be looking for from our center backs. That's what I want to see in these next 180 minutes making sure we're not too high, we're not too deep, and, and are we moving together as a group? Because those little moments, and you guys know this, are so important to the success of, of whether we're going to turn transitional plays into, into completing attacks, as, as he likes to say. Sorry, I put my coaching hat on. But let's talk about the midfielders. We have six of them only. Well, that's that's essentially. We've got Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams, Luca De La Torre, Weston McKinney, Eunice Musa, and Malik Tillman. Well done, Malik Tillman. Only two caps for the U.S. men's national team, but has really stepped up and shown his quality while playing for Rangers under Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Maybe didn't do as much as we would have liked to see him uh, in, in a recent game against Ajax in, in the Champions League. James Sands, I don't think, showered himself with glory either in that particular game, but Ajax are, are a tremendous team, and they're going to get a lot of experience in this Champions League overall. Any surprises there? Charlie, I'll come to you first. I think it looks solid to me. No, no surprises. I mean, Malik Tillman can play where Yunus Musa plays, but I think he's going to be used as a winger. Um, you know, a backup to Pulisic, a backup to right now. Aronson, you think you think Reina. Tillman's the, you think Tillman will make the World Cup roster? I know Heath does, but what do you think, Charlie? At this moment, yes. You know, if, if Georgi Mihailovic was called in, which I think would have been interesting because of of how well he's done in, in MLS, and he, he's an intriguing player just in the way he he finds space. I think he's really grown uh, physically in the league, and and he, he's one who who plays those penetrating balls. Who's always looking to, to play forward. That would have been a uh, this would have been a good opportunity to see if if he can if he can adjust and play at this level, at this speed of of, of pace as well as 
the physicality at the international level. But since he is not in the plans right now, uh, I, I think Tillman is probably going to make the roster. Uh, you know, I, we'll get into the wingers with Morris and Ariola. I mean, Jordan Morris. I, I wait is, really is quick. Well, we'll layout, get into but. that. But 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 you think Tillman will be seen as a backup winger and not necessarily as essential because they have him listed as a central midfielder as it pertains. Well, with to Rangers, the he's playing wide, right? That's, he, I know he is, but but he, he comes in. So yeah, I mean, he, he's he doesn't have the pace. So you have to you have to adapt. And typically, as a winger. You got to have pace unless you're one who's very dynamic and comes inside. He's more smooth and not as quick. He's, he's a different style uh, midfielder. And, and so maybe maybe he's he's impressed Greg to the point where Greg wants to see another look at him. But I don't think he's guaranteed for sure not. Yeah. Okay. Heath, any, any thoughts on these? I mean, seems pretty straightforward. No big surprises outside of maybe Tillman. Uh, but I'm not even surprised by that given his performances with Rangers recently. Yeah. And I think there is just something if, if Greg's been watching Malik Tillman for the last year, plus before he has decided to play for the United States men's national team, that there is something there similar to a Eunice Musa, similar to a Luca De La Torre. There is, there is, there is, there is something special in his abilities and his capabilities that, He's part of the plans. And I could just feel like we talk about coming in and needing to earn your spot in the national team. And we know that that's for some guys need to do that, you know, camp in and camp out. But there's other guys where you just go, he's got it, you know, and you know, he's already at the level. It's just whether or not he's playing for a club team and there's other circumstances that come into it. But in terms of his abilities, I think that Greg just sees something in him that's um, that's that's there already. So uh, this, no shocks for me in this midfield in this midfield group. This is by far. It's not even close. The strongest part of of this group. You don't of think the, our wingers, our wingers of are the, of the U.S. men's national team. This is by far our strongest area. Hey, someone Dude. said it sounds like Charlie's uh, private chef is getting getting lunch ready for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's actually the masseuse setting up the massage table right uh, yeah. off camera. All right, let's get then to what I I think will be considered the most controversial area of. The roster. It is the strikers and wingers. We got Brendan Aronson who's coming in. No big surprise. Paul Ariola. I don't think it's going to be a big surprise to to many, given the just his role under Greg Berhalter throughout. I'm not surprised by it. Jesus Ferreira's in. Jordan Morris. I think is a bit of a surprise. Ricardo Pepe. I'm not surprised because I thought that, and I mentioned this on, on on Monday's show that I think he wanted to bring him back in, get him back into the fold. But it's been a long time since he's been. With the team and obviously he hasn't scored in a while so we're still waiting for that hopefully he can do it in these two friendlies we've got christian pulisic of course geo reyna's back into the team great to see that josh Sargent is back in he's been killing it for norwich and the big surprise is that there's no big guys in that mix so no jordan pifok no haji Wright, and we have a it, it feels like we have a lot of guys that are kind of similar as opposed to maybe having some contrast in this roster going to resident number nine charlie davies here what, what are your initial thoughts? So well, you already heard your initial thoughts, but but now that you yeah. sat with it a little bit more, Charlie, like, how are you feeling about this this collection of our front three? So I'm looking at Morris and Ariola because I see a lot of the comments, right? Morris and Ariola are are locker room guys, guys who who don't take away from not playing, who, who aren't expected to play either. I mean, it's it's a little puzzling that Jordan Morris gets called in because in the last 10 games in Major League Soccer, he has just one goal and one assist. One goal and one assist in 10 games. We talked about Brandon Vasquez. I don't think he deserves to get called in because of the way he's played over the past 10 games or so. And Jordan Moore certainly over the last 10 games hasn't done enough to get onto this squad. Now, Paul, Paul Ariola has two assists in those last five, but only two assists in, in 10 and no goals. But you know what you get from Paul Ariola. He's a utility guy. He's one of those guys that I think will be, in terms of training, giving you something if you need another defender. So, so here, here's player. my question. Yeah. Here's my he, question really quick. They're, no, they're not going to play. Well, that's I, I I think at this point, when you're looking at the Ariolas and, and the Jordan Morrises, would you trust them coming off the bench and making a difference? Ariola, yes. Yeah, Ariola, I agree yes. with you. Ariola, yes. Nothing Ariola, against Jamo Smooth. I love, I love Jordan. But, I know, but, but he hasn't he been impactful score. in the national team either. Like he well, doesn't. He, no, look he scored the a goal down. Yeah, down but in, he doesn't. 
He doesn't look the player that that he was that was a threat every time he's on the ball. I don't see that. I don't see his impact being the same when I compare his impact to a Brennan Aronson or somebody else that come on. Again, I think we're thin on the left side. He's a left-sided player, and and that could be the only thing that's, again, even though he's right-footed, that could be where they for see what? his... Uh, for who? For Christian Pulisic as, as, as depth. Christian Pulisic is a depth piece. You're saying I'm no, not, no, no. I'm saying Ariola. Ariola. Oh, no, Ariola. I'm saying Jordan Morris. Oh, Jordan as Morris, depth sorry. as depth for Christian Pulisic. <laughs> as we start to look at Sam Bynes, saying, "Man, we should probably have a backup that's a little more natural in this spot." I could see the thinking around that. But Paul Ariola is one that I like. I look at him. I looked at him uh, a couple days ago against um, against LAFC, and I go, "That guy's having an impact on games." And as a depth player that comes in, can stretch the field keep teams honest, do the work, trust him. Yes, he's not a, a, a top player. Yes, he's not Timo Weah or anywhere near Brendan Aronson, but I do see something there for justification of, of bringing him in. Jordan Morris, though, and, and because I, I, I think his form is good right now. Jordan Morris is, is a little bit more of a shocking one to me uh, yeah, or a surprise agreed. one to me. Agreed. And, and I will say, uh, Jimmy, Ferreira, Pepe, Sargent, I have no issues with those three being called in. They deserve to be. A same, a same. Uh, I just was hoping for some always, contrast. Well, that's all. With a I think, Pepe, Vasquez I, is out, by the way. I, I think yeah, thanks for coming. Vasquez for me, he he was not going to be involved because he, he just didn't do enough. He he dropped off considerably. Um, Once on he found center. out he wasn't going to be on the roster, he's like, yeah. oh man, this um, inspiration, but, but, motivation. But, but I will say, <laughs> you know, you're looking at the three. Pepe. I, I knew he was going to – I'm still saying he's going to the World Cup. That's a – and this, I think, is yeah. further proof. This move to, to Holland is a is is going to be a big-time um, help for him in terms of getting minutes, getting his confidence back because playing time is what you need. And and making that – make you know, take a step back to move, take two steps forward, I think that's exactly what he did with, with that move to Groningen. But um, Sargent, he's played his way into it. And Greg wants – these guys to be able to press defensive work is huge for this group. Can, can you do that? Can you make the right runs, the movements? That's so important to him. It's more important than quality on the ball. Can you dribble players one V one situations? You know, not necessarily any of their, their strengths, but in this case, Greg doesn't, doesn't need his nines to do that. So he's depending on Christian Pulisic and Aronson and Wea and, and Reyna to be those guys who can we break people down on the dribble just make hard runs in the box and finish your chances. We got youth. That's what I, we got youth and, and you got to use that youth because with youth comes mistakes and, ex, and, and inexperience, but with youth also comes the legs, the ability to run, the ability to, 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 to do the things that Greg wants them to do, right? That pressing game is going to probably be our biggest strength in attack. Our best attack is going to come from the way that we press in a world cup. If we, if, if we do decide to, to press now, I know Greg wants to press all over the field all the time in 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 an ideal situation. But if you get that buy-in against teams, again, we talk about one mistake kills us. If we can force that one mistake on other teams with the youth players that we have in the attack, like a Sergeant or or a Pepe or whoever, and or Ferrer, those are all three players that I know. If Greg says press, they're going to press oh, every single time. You best believe the whole the whole group is pressing because yeah. if they weren't pressing, if there was even a a, a doubt. Of, of this group not pressing most of the match, we would see a Tim Reed. We would see a John Brooks. We would see players who are or good. A, or a PFOC. Uh, or a PFOC. We're good with just sitting back and, and absorbing pressure and trying to counter or playing long balls or, or launching balls into the box for a big striker. There, That's not at all what the, the idea, uh, the game plan is for the U.S. Men's National Team. So Greg Peralta is saying, hey, this is my roster based on my tactical game plan. That's okay, it. so so we, we appreciate everybody joining us for this emergency U.S. Men's National Team roster podcast. We're going to have our normal programming. We'll be back at you tomorrow and Friday, of course, a lot to get into. And I know we're going to have a special preview for the Japan game and the Saudi Arabia game, but because this roster is so fresh and our emotion about it is so raw, Heath, I'm going to come to you first. Who are you going to start? Knowing that we're going to use this pressing tactical approach to this game, who would you start in the first game against Japan? Knowing who now, now that we have the roster here and it's tangible, we can see all the names. Who are you going with? Uh, I'm gonna go Sam Vines. Uh, I'm gonna Wait, go well, Matt Turner and goal. I assume Matt Turner and goal. Yeah, that's okay. the, that's the one thing I just want to make. I just just want to make sure we got it on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sam Vines, uh, Walker Zimmerman. I I I would love to see 
I, I really want Richards there, but I think it'll be Vickers or 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 Long just based on 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 playing time. So I'm going to go with uh, Cameron Carter Vickers. Um, right back, Sergio Des. Then we have MMA in the middle. Uh, that that I think we could see an Aronson or a Reina uh, in one of those two games. But in game one, MMA. Um, and then, uh, Pulisic, this is where uh, it gets, it gets I, I think, a little, yeah. a little, a little difficult. I'm, up I'm thinking it's going to be Ferreira, if not Sargent. And then at, at right, I, I see, I see Aaron's in there. So not a huge, like, I'm not taking any, any, any huge. So G Arena's, G Arena's your super sub. I know he's still maybe not a hundred percent. So you want to be kind of, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, again, I, I, I just, I'm having trouble finding the place for him right now and he's unbelievable uh in his in his kind of return to form you can see what the what we've all bragged about about him being likely the highest upside of any u.s player that we have in our pool right now uh, career wise but i just don't know where you where you put him into a team that's been like fighting together and also the pressing thing like rain has got to buy into that press as well not to say he won't but i think him getting that feel again maybe you start him in the second game whether that's in in a in a ten spot or in the wing spot and uh, try something differently, but it, it's uh, yeah, it's a tough, it's a challenge. Okay, what, what, what's yours, Charlie? No, hold on, I'll, I'll get to mine, Charlie. This is a question for you because I think it pertains to how I might actually shape my starting eleven. I'll and I'll name mine last because I have the benefit yeah. of doing that. Let's go. <laughs> but Charlie, yeah. I, I guess what I want to know is because right now I'm thinking I would start Sergeant, but um, but then I thought okay. If you start Ferreira, is Sargent a better super sub? You know how some players can come in and make that instant impact with their energy or – or and I think Sargent might come in and might have that type of an impact as opposed to a Ferreira where Ferreira, I think – I don't know. It just seems – I'm going to say seems. I'm going to emphasize seems. Like he would fit better at like kind of the start of a game, establishing the rhythm and then allowing a sergeant to come in and replace him. So don't, I'm kind of torn on that. Don't try and get in my head. Let me I'm, I'm just, my, I'm just throwing that out there for everybody. Level. I'm getting, I'm trying yeah. to get in everybody's head right now. I'm trying to yeah. live rent free in everybody's brains. But, but what, so what's your starting 11, Charlie? Go from, from back to front. Think, do you think Sergeant has this burst of pace to really come in and change the game with this, with his pace and be a game changing sub? It's tough because. You don't know how the game's going to play out, right? We we talk about situational stuff a lot, and and if if a team gets a lead on us, and then they sit back, then Sergeant, I think some of his strengths aren't as utilized because he needs some places to run into, and if those aren't existing, how how do we then break down a low block? That's still a, an issue for us overall. Our whole player pool, mm -hmm. not just isolated to Josh Sergeant. But go ahead, give me give me back to front. You're starting. All right, Tur Turner, Sam Vines left back. I'm gonna go Chris Richards left center back. Zimmerman right center back. Dest right back. Then Adams, McKinney, Musa in the midfield. Mm -hmm. Christian Pulisic left wing. Uh, Jesus Ferra as the nine, and Brendan Aronson as the as the right winger. All right, yeah. all right. He's not too far. I don't think that's too different from yours, Heath. The same. Oh, what, different what, center backs. Different center backs. What, what were the center backs again, Charlie? He had uh, uh, he had I, Richards I, and, and Zimmerman. I had, I had Richards and Zimmerman. The the thing for for a lot of people, I know everyone's saying, "Hey, Gio Reyna. Gio Reyna is." is Dope. Everyone knows he's the real deal, but he needs time. He he still needs time. He's getting back into it. Don't rush him. He he's, it's, he's not ready. Oh, uh, the worst thing we could possibly do is, worst, is come out of this camp with Gio Reyna having a hamstring players. issue. Well, not right? even injured, but like you know that if, if if you're Greg, you're like, look, in an, an ideal world, I'm starting Reyna every game. Do I know if I'm going to have Reyna come World Cup time fit and healthy? I don't know. Do I want to use 180 minutes assuming he's there? Maybe, maybe not. I think it'd probably be better again to see like, do I have, do I, in a worst case scenario come November, do I have the players and the depth needed to put out, a, if it's not my ideal 11 in terms of injuries, can I put out another 11 that competes in the World Cup? And and we need to be able to 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 know that with certainty, with trust, because he's a trust guy. Um, and, and, and by the way, on, on Jordan, uh, uh, I mean, on Ricardo Pepe, we all know the kind of player that he is the, and the potential that he has. And we know that Greg, I think Greg likes him. And Greg looks at somebody like that, as Charlie says, and goes, I need any reason to bring you in. Give me the reason to bring you in. I want you in this national team pool in this camp. But if you can't help yourself, I can't help you. Now he's made that move. He's come on. Yes, he's got an assist. He played whatever minutes. Um, no, that was a, and he's a pretty good start to his, his Yeah, his I, I fully agree. I don't want to discredit that. But, but like... Yeah, but he made the difference on the goal. Yeah, that's yeah. What they yeah, yeah. He had an assist on 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 the goal, but like it, to me, it, that, that's not enough. But I think Greg needs him needs to be able to justify bringing in a guy that hasn't scored in a long time, that's out of form, um, to to keep him in this pool because I think he has plans for him. What I find interesting about that comment is then how many minutes do you give a Ricardo Pepe? 
Now I'm going to give you my my starting eleven, then we can we can continue to discuss this. I got Turner. I got the same back four as Charlie. We have Vines, Richards, Zimmerman, and Dest. Uh, MMA in the midfield. Christian Pulisic. But, will can start. I ask real quick before we yeah. go past Richards? I love Richards, but why are we giving Richards starts without playing? What are you talking about without playing? He's played. He's not. He's playing, yeah, the, but he, he's playing the prem for Crystal Charlie, Palace. And, yeah. and not only but, that, the two guys ahead of him are, are worth $40 million plus. What are you talking about? That's like Christian that's, saying, why, why is he playing? He, he doesn't play no, at all. But Christian, Christian, Christian plays 20, 30, 90 in and out for the last couple of years. That's the argument. Chris he, Richards plays like a minute. minutes here and there. Chris Richards has played 40 minutes in eight games or whatever it is. Okay. I, and then I, he played so, a full okay. year in the Bundesliga. He, he started every game for Hoffenheim. So what are, you, what are we talking no, about? No, he was here? actually injured for part of that season. But like <laughs> well, when he was healthy, he started yeah. every game. So we, we, we can, we can split hairs on everybody, I think, um, if, if we want to. I'll say this uh, with regard to it. Cameron Carter-Vickers, I know what he brings to the table. Uh, Aaron Long, for me, is it either or with Walker Zimmerman. I don't know if you play both of them at the same time, I, I think that I want a little contrast with my center backs and they feel somewhat similar. I would similar. agree with that. So, so Chris Richards, I think does have something that the other ones don't. And uh, I, I, I just want to see a pairing that could potentially see him succeed. And I think that pairing next to Walker is probably what we're going to, and that's deferring to Walker playing at the level that he was during World Cup qualifying. Of course. I mean, if any of these guys, any of these guys, not just Walker, but anybody has a little bit of slight drop off as we've discussed timing when you're playing well, really bodes well for playing well in a world cup as well. So, so that is, that's kind of why I, I'd want to bring Richards in and see what it looks like. I, I think you give him one of the games for 90 and then, and then you try another pairing. Uh, it's just a matter of like, does, is it going to be paired with Richards? Is it going to be Walker with somebody else? Or is it completely, is it, that's the, the center back position went from feeling pretty good about it to feeling a little bit wide open. And that makes me, well, I was all on, concerned. I was, I'm full on Richards starting with, if he stayed at Hoffenheim, but uh, I'm not even talking about the fact that he's played three matches in 47 minutes so far in the Premier League. I'm talking about the fact that we could see come November that he's played three matches in 47 minutes in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's in two no, months. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. We also have that with our goalkeepers, right? There's a whole <laughs> yeah, bunch of players yeah. that we have that issue. So MMA in the midfield, Christian Pulisic will start. I think Ferreira is probably going to get the nod. And I, I think Brendan Aronson's undeniable at this point. Gio Reyna, yeah. if, yeah. you, if you go pound for pound and Gio Reyna's healthy and playing at his peak, like we're seeing right now with Brendan Aronson, then, then that would be a really tough one to know. But I think Gio Reyna <sighs> would get the nod. It's clear that he has something a little bit different are we than, rigid than are, are both you guys rigid in this knowing that like the one thing whether it's aronson or Weya or reyna that the one thing that won't change is mma to cater That's to two of those yeah. players that 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 will not change i i think the big question about mma is with the emergence of musa starting to do more things going forward that now asks mckenny to be a little bit more thoughtful of when to attack as well, because if both of those guys go at the same time, it's going to well, leave us really want. vulnerable for the counter. So there's going to be a lot of discipline that has to happen between McKinney and, and Musa in terms of who's going to join the attack and, and when. Do and not how. like a double pivot in the ten spot versus a six spot. It, it, it's it's how he plays at Juve with discipline. That's the only way. The only reason he's on the pitch for Juve is because he plays with discipline. The, the other two midfielders, one more defensive and one more attacking, he has to balance and be a little bit more defensive than, than, than in, in an attacking mindset. But what he does so well is that late run into the box. Yes. He makes those late runs, 100%. doesn't get tracked, and then he's efficient. He's effective with, the, with that play. So uh, that's why that's, that's not moving at all. Unless this is a great problem to have. We, we have a right, tremendous right, midfield. So this is a great but, problem to yeah. have. I, that's, one thing that's I do want to note. So much stronger. Than yeah, any part of our no, team. that's fair. That's fair. I might, I might have to lean towards that. Obviously, Timo Wea, we hadn't talked about. I'm glad you brought him up. He's hurt right now with Lille. Got a foot injury that seems like he can't shake. So we'll see when he comes back. Though I'm hearing reports that he's fine. So I don't know if there's there's stuff uh, happening behind the scenes, but hopefully that can get remedied uh, as soon as possible. One of the things that I will say, the benefit of Gio Reyna is he likes to come central, right? Not that Brendan Anderson doesn't, but but if he starts wide and comes in. That does allow that width to be created by a Serginho Dest who can now fill it in a different way. Whereas if if you stay out wide towards the sideline to go get the ball, then Dest doesn't really have any space to run into and join the attack. He has to come in a little bit deeper. So all these little things that obviously have to be put together and the pieces of the puzzle have to be put together. All right, we're done with the show. Final thoughts. Charlie Davies coming to you first. Final thoughts before we let everybody go. We got two shows Thursday and Friday this week before we get cracking again next week. 
love love our audience love all the support keep all those uh likes and subscribes and yeah, five star uh, reviews coming we appreciate the, you the chat the chat has been fire so respect <laughs> respect to everybody in here um i saw i saw my brother in here uh, <laughs> bro i read a book away. i read a whole book of uh, how many comments there's been like i'm having trouble keeping up right now i'm a slow reader that's amazing <laughs> why am i dressed like from <laughs> dust till dawn <laughs> uh, Pete Morton, our, 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 our comment section is undefeated by the way so good. Uh, all right short and sweet for you guys I, I love I love the best eleven that we have for for these friendlies, given the injuries to Anthony Robinson and Team Awea. So I, I'm I'm happy with this roster. Not too many surprises for me, um, and and the surprises are are really the players at at, at roster spot 25 and 26, right? So it's mm -hmm. it, there are, there are no surprises, and hopefully they, they they hit the ground running in camp. All right, Heath Pierce, final thoughts. Uh, just a reminder, we've got 26 players in camp, but we are still missing. Team Awea. We're still missing uh, Anthony, Robinson. Stephan, Anthony Robinson. So there will be changes come final roster time. This is not the final one, but man, we are close. And after this camp, there is just very little that I think Greg, who who seems uh, to have his his habit and a clearer picture uh, from, from seeing anything shocking. Obviously, there was a lot of comments in here about Zendejas. I was even reading yesterday that there was still an opportunity for him to go to the U.S., but I just haven't I don't even know if Greg's it, it ever. It feels even too little, too late yeah. at this point, you know. Yeah, or I, I still don't have clarity on what that situation even is. So, um, it just seems like that was more the rumor mill than anything. But, uh, man, I'm excited to, to to see this group come together, knowing that uh, the next time that that we do this is going to be when when it's the real deal, you know. No, no, I'm excited to see how the team performs as well, and obviously who's going to start and how it's all going to be put together. It's exciting. Oh, oh, oh Jimmy, and 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 by the way, on that on the notes that we got from from U.S. Soccer, it's uh, it will have been like three thousand days since the U.S. Men's National Team was in a World Cup, so it's a long time. That's a, that is a really long time. <laughs> We're all suffering over here, but uh, we can finally put that to yeah. rest very very soon. All right, that is it. We are done with In Soccer We Trust this time around. So on behalf of producer Des, producer Alex, Charlie, Chuck Wagon Davies, and Hollywood Heat Pierce, I'm Jimmy Trashcan Conrad saying thank you for listening and watching as always, and we'll see you tomorrow and Friday for more of the good stuff. Later.